Hello everyone, and welcome to another Let's Play of The Royal Trap by Hanako Games. My name is Anna Mardal, and today we're going to go through uh, Chapter 2, and we are going for the Gaston Good Alliance ending. So, um, and I want to remind everyone that this is a kind of a spoiler heavy Let's Play. Um, if you don't like spoilers, <laughs> then you might want to um, maybe play through the game first yourself or watch somebody else going through it for the first time because I have been through it um, at least twice now already. So, let's go ahead and start Chapter 2. When we last left, we had gone to investigate Prince Gaston's room and met him and his maid Paulette. Then we came back to the room we share with our Prince Oscar and only to be attacked by Prince Caleb and he has taken Oscar hostage. This is chapter two, The Bargain. Drowning my heart's panicked cry, I forced myself to examine the situation in detail. Oscar's eyes are wide over the silken gag, probably stray hose. I don't see any signs of further injury or struggle. Caleb's actions must have taken him completely by surprise. How could either of us have guessed the prince was a madman? Which I'm just going to take a moment to do sort of register in with Anna feels. Um, <laughs> Uh, the linking of <laughs> the linking of mental illness with violence is a common mistake um, that ideally people would stop making. Most mentally ill people are not violent. I am mentally ill. I struggle with depression. I am not violent because of my mental illness. Um, Caleb here, for example, is violent and is not mentally ill. Most of the people who are violent are not mentally ill. So that's a common mistake that people make that violence equals mental illness, but that's actually, that's not, it's not correct and it stigmatizes mental illness. And it makes it hard for people to speak up and say, yeah, over here I have mental illness because people think, oh, they must be violent. I have mental illness, I'm not violent. <laughs> so I, I don't blame Madeline because like I said, that's a common misconception. But I thought I'd take the chance there to sort of maybe take an education moment. So, <laughs> sorry, back, back from the editorializing. Think, stall for time, think. You can't possibly mean that. You're already suspect, this bow he nudges very slightly with his blade, and Oscar flinches. Was the last one with my sister, and you have been creeping about like a spider. If I kill you both and claim self-defense, do you think anyone will have any questions? That presumes you can win. Perhaps you could hold me off with your little stings, but too late for your livelihood here. You're bluffing. You wouldn't dare murder a visiting prince, especially not like this. Tied up, his blood all over your clothes. If I scream for the guards, you couldn't possibly have the time to clean up the evidence. He laughs. Clever, you are the one I need. I don't want his blood or any part of him. But if we can't make a deal, I will have to call for the guards and we'll see what happens. What do you want from me? Your oath. You serve me without question until Cassidy is safe and no knife in my back. And you expect me to cooperate when you're threatening my friend. I need a partner I can trust absolutely and this is the only leverage I've got. I don't have time to argue your oath now. There's really no choice to be made I can't let him harm Oscar. Fine, I'll do what you want. Formal oath. He presses his bare palm to the edge of his sword just long enough to break the skin and then holds it out to me. 
A blood vow. That's what he wants. My hand and my blood match to his. My honor subject to his will. A privilege that, until now, has belonged to Oscar alone. And by that bond, I can't refuse. Fighting down a feeling of panic at events moving beyond my power to control them, I remove my glove and scratch across my palm. Then, before Oscar's eyes, I place my hand in Caleb's, skin to skin. I offer you my service and obedience until the rescue of Princess Cassidy. Within limits. I won't murder for you, and I won't die for you. And if any harm comes to Oscar, the deal is off. Pushy, aren't you? But he takes his sword away from Oscar's throat, and in one motion sheathes it. You said you wanted a partner. Partners speak up. If you don't mind, I'd like to take that thing off him now. As long as you can keep him under control. My fingers are already moving to loosen the gag. Pah! Maddie, what are you doing? You can't work for him. He's lost his head. I glare at Oscar and hope that for once he'll read the message in my eyes. Don't provoke him. It's too late for arguments now. My oath is given, and this is the situation we have, so we'd better make the best of it. If he's trying to save the princess, he is our ally. And staying close to Caleb means being able to keep an eye on him. Not that I can explain that at the moment. Please, Oscar, trust me. He's a knock-kneed, double-crossing sneak. I liked him better with the muzzle. I wave my hands through the air, gesturing the two of them apart. Both of you, no biting. But, fine. This day keeps building up more and more apologies that I owe him. <laughs> oh my gosh, Maddie, you do not owe Oscar an apology. You are trying to keep him safe, and he is, he is, he is making that very difficult for you by arguing right now. I feel like you're being the sensible one, throwing that out there. It's all worthwhile, as long as he is safe and whole, for me to apologize too. So, how are we supposed to rescue Cassidy? The whole castle's looking for her already. What do you know that they don't? I have the ransom note. We bring the gold, they bring the princess. How do you know it's genuine? There was a lock of her hair. If you have a rendezvous point, why not take some guards and go fetch her? You do what I say without questions. Right. He said he needed someone without connections. Perhaps he's afraid that any guard he relied on could be in the employ of the Duke and Duchess. It would be easy to arrange an accident during a hostage exchange. He is paranoid, but not completely without reason. Oscar sighs and leans against the doorframe. He's looking a bit pale. This day has taken a heavy toll on him, both emotionally and physically. Come on, we have work to do. Just you, Valoy. He stays here. Leave Oscar alone? So now we have another choice. We can either go with Caleb now or we can talk to Oscar first. Um, I personally kind of prefer to talk to Oscar first, but I always try to pick different stuff so that in each playthrough you can see different content. So we'll save talking for Oscar for the playthrough when we're actually romancing Oscar. And for this time, we'll just go with Caleb. Go with Caleb now. Fine. Wait, what am I supposed to do? Sit. Be quiet. Don't talk to anyone or else. He jerks his thumb in my direction. Perfect symmetry. For me, he threatens Oscar. For Oscar, he threatens me. But I will be all right, and I would rather have Oscar away from Caleb. You'll be safe here. I don't want to be safe. I want to help. 
must I demonstrate your weakness to you once again? I said no biting. Leave him alone. Very well. We should go. So what now? We need to assemble the ransom money. 2,000 golden ducators. That's quite a sum. But not that much for a princess, really. I suspect our kidnapper lacks imagination. You don't happen to have that gold sitting around in your chambers. No, we will have to obtain it from the royal treasury. This is your palace. Can't you just requisition funds? We need to obtain the coin without attracting notice. Rob the royal treasury. Right. How does he imagine we're going to pull that off? Picking a lock is out of the question. Treasuries are always guarded. And yet, despite myself, I'm starting to find the prospect interesting. It's a challenge, a puzzle that I can understand and solve. This is why I needed a suitably discreet partner. Rather suitably distracting. I hope you don't expect me to jiggle at the guards. I'd look ridiculous too obvious. I have a plan. It all depends on how convincing you can be. The carpet beneath my feet is thick and plush, muffling the sound of my footfalls, which is not to say that there is no warning of my approach. In this part of the palace, the walls are inset with viewing windows, enabling guards to keep an eye on foot traffic in all directions. After all, you wouldn't want anyone being able to sneak into the royal treasury. One guard on duty, his attentive gaze dutifully sweeping back and forth with the occasional check behind him. Good. There is little in the way of extra ornamentation in these corridors. No paintings on the walls, no hothouse blooms forced into show, only the pattern in gilded ceiling tiles. I crane my neck upwards to stare at the muted, non-reflective golden surfaces, paying no attention to where I am walking. Oh! That is, of course, the moment that my foot catches on the edge of that plush length of carpet, throwing me to the ground with a thump. I don't cry out all that loudly. I've only tripped. It's nothing serious. I'll just climb back to my feet. Ow! And that is when I first attempt to put weight onto my left ankle. This time, the noise I'm making is enough to draw the guard a few steps away from his post. Still more than close enough to see anyone approaching, but now also able to get a better look at me. Are you alright, miss? I'm fine. I wave him away and try again to place my foot on the ground, then pull it back with a sharp hiss and clutch at the wall for support. I distinctly do not look at the guard, but male instinct prompts him to step a little closer to my obvious, if false, distress. Can you walk? I'm not sure. I'll call for another guard to help you to your room. No, please don't. I'll be all right. I just need to rest for a few minutes. You can't rest here, miss. I use the wall for support and take a hesitant step, trying to look as fragile as possible, just a little bit longer. You can't walk on your own. I'll have to summon someone. I don't want to be a bother. It is my duty. No need. Prince Calum walks out of the treasury, which he entered earlier, in full view of the guard under the pretext of returning a bit of royal jewelry worn at the ball. Long, smooth strides bring him swiftly to my side and avoid the possibility of any inconvenient jingling. I will escort this young woman. Yes, your highness. Caleb bends, bringing his shoulders to a level where I can more easily fling a grateful arm around them. As he straightens, his support pulls me against him, not so coincidentally helping to conceal the faint bolt produced by stowing a large bag of coins out of sight. He nods to the guard. Carry on. 
and we leave the man to lock the door behind us now that the gold has already flown away. We keep up the charade on our return to Oscar's quarters in case of observation. Caution costs nothing except my pride. I cannot help but feel strange, clinging as I am to the body of a man I barely know, a prince of hidden schemes and unpredictable violence. Calum is well muscled, stronger and more solidly built than Oscar, and pressed so close to me that I can feel the heat of his flesh. My duties to my prince have not left me time for much experience with the rougher sex. The support of his arm should, I suppose, make me feel safe and protected. Instead it leaves me off balance and vulnerable. It would be easy in this position for him to accidentally brush, to slide a possessive arm around my waist, to belittle me for the helplessness I have been made to feign. And yet his hands never stray. Failure to act like an odious brute at every opportunity does not make him a hero. It only means that he is, at worst, not that sort of villain. What sort of man is Prince Calum? So far he has revealed little but anger and ruthless determination. I have been forced to give him my allegiance, and for safety's sake I must pretend complete loyalty, but that does not stop me from thinking. His secrecy suggests that he has enemies within the palace. Or else... He was quite clearly bitter about his position as the youngest son, and it does not seem that Friedrich and Paloma are expending much effort to polish him for a good marriage. But if he rescued a princess from peril, the same act of heroism that I had hoped to achieve for Oscar might instead benefit Caleb. He could not be rewarded with his sister's hand, of course, but the story would travel. If that is his plan, it would make no difference to him if Oscar were to receive a small bit of the glory, or even the affections, of this particular princess. We could still gain. But rationally, is the chance of playing hero worth the risk he took by attacking myself and Oscar? By threatening murder? It doesn't add up. Either there's something I'm not seeing, or Caleb is not acting rationally. Which is worse? The instant the door closes behind us, Oscar rushes to my side. Madeline! I'm fine. It was an act. I retract my arm from Caleb's shoulders and stand on my own two feet. Your assistance was competent. Is that supposed to be a thank you? But you can't thank someone for doing what you force them to, can you? Oscar, it's all right. No, it's not. He turns to face Caleb. Are you done with her? Hardly. This was only the first step. We have the ransom. Now we have to reach the rendezvous. And where's that? Forest, a couple of miles away. Outside the palace? The guards may have missed the initial intrusion, but they're certainly guarding all exits now. Which means, you know a secret way out? He only nods, his eyes locked on Oscar's. I hold my breath, anticipating an explosion. But when Oscar speaks, his words are carefully measured. You're not taking her without me. I need a blade I can rely on. That means her and not you. I am not actually that bad with a sword. Whatever's going on, you expect it might end in a fight. Wouldn't three on your side be better than two? He's thinking it through. Good for you, Oscar. If you really didn't trust him, you wouldn't want to leave him here while you're not even in the palace. Can he actually fight? Would you care to try me? I'm asking her, not you. He's a prince, of course he can fight. But is he any good, compared to, say, myself? That question is a trap, plain and simple. Whatever I say, they will both hear it. <laughs> so we have to pick one. So I'm gonna say he's better for you whenever we're 
Just a second. Sorry about that. It seems like the phone always knows when I'm doing a Let's Play. Um, I'm gonna save he's better than you, which would compliment Oscar for when we're actually romancing Oscar. I'm gonna save he's not as good for you as you whenever we're trying to compliment Caleb. And since we're going through the Gaston ending and it doesn't matter, I'm going to pick he's good in a fair fight. He's good enough in a fair fight. Fairness may be in short supply. He won't embarrass you, if that's what you're asking. In all truth, I'm not certain whether or not it is a good idea to take Oscar along. It depends on what Caleb's plans really are, and that is a question I can't answer. He's assembled a ransom, but as Oscar said, he sounds like he's preparing for a fight. Maybe he's just guarding himself in case the kidnappers try to capture him as well. Or maybe there's something else going on here. If there's a battle waiting for us, Oscar could get hurt. But with all the secrets and schemes going on here, I'm not sure that leaving him behind would be safer. If Caleb actually didn't trust Oscar, he might have arranged for something to happen to him once I was out of the way, or any of the other nobles might come around asking questions. No, I can't leave the palace without him. He's my responsibility, and I must not abandon him. I could never forgive myself if something went wrong without me there to defend him. And if it comes to a battle, then at least I would have someone at my back whose loyalty I could rely on. Caleb, I can't trust. Oscar, I could never doubt. He blows out a breath. I suppose it will have to do. You may accompany me, but without your sword. I will decide if you should have one. Just remember who's in command here. Whatever you see or hear, you do what I tell you. I understand. Which isn't quite the same as a promise to obey. Caleb looks at me. I expect you to keep an eye on him. I always do. Because if he betrays me, he will pay. The blunt reminder that Caleb is not our new friend leaves the room silent for a moment. Should I fetch a purse then? Not funny. She doesn't like my jokes. She doesn't like my poetry either. Would you like to hear some? Will you be quiet? See, we're getting along fine. I can't help smiling along with him. Even under such tension, nothing damps his spirit for long. But my role is to be the focused and responsible one, and I'd better get back to playing it. So, you have the ransom and you have your backup. Where do we find this secret exit? And how certain are you that it is still secret and still unguarded? What if someone's been using it? The entrance is hidden and known only to the royal family. The door beyond it is kept locked. And if you get through that, you end up somewhere that most people would not want to go. The underground tunnels that Caleb led us to are choked with rubble and spider webs. It is visibly obvious that no one has been this way in a long time. The entrance was the worst. The stones overhead cracked and crumbling and threatening to collapse at any moment. As we've moved along, the state of repair has increased, but so has the unpleasant atmosphere. The air down here is fetid and insects are constantly flapping at the edges of our torchlight. What is this place? Hundreds of years ago, when customs were different, these were the catacombs. The bodies of those who died in service were laid here to rot, so that even in death, their spirits would remain beneath their masters. That's awful! It is the way things were. When times changed, part of these tunnels were reworked into a sewage system that feeds into the river. That explains the bugs and the smell. Watch yourself, little prince. Where there are insects, there are spiders, and some of them bite. As we ease along a narrow stone ledge, Caleb's shoulder comes into contact with a bit of loose rubble in a wall niche and knocks it out of place. A pale-bellied snake, dislodged from its slumber, falls onto his arm and begins to writhe. Calmly, Oscar reaches over and scoops the snake off Caleb and onto the floor, 
where it slithers away. You were saying? Oscar! Don't worry, those aren't poisonous. I think. Hmm. Is it actually dangerous down here? It isn't safe, but I wouldn't have brought you if I expected it to be fatal. Did you explore here as a child? No. Once. There's nothing to see but rocks and bones and filth. There wasn't any point. No hidden treasure. Who would leave anything precious among the bodies of dead peasants? Their families. Their families were peasant families. They would have nothing of value unless they'd stolen it from their masters and then they'd keep it for themselves. Thieves are not generous. You're such a cynic. Sigh. <laughs> there once was a sourpuss from Gwellinor who postured and puffed till he was good and sore. Do you ever stop talking? When I'm asleep. Once we leave these tunnels, it is imperative that we remain silent. There may be guards on watch. If you can't handle that, turn back now or you'll have us all shot. Oscar's only joking with you. He wouldn't put us in danger. Hmm. In the distance, I hear a kind of rustling. What was that? Bats. We're getting close now. Watch your step. As predicted, the dank tunnels eventually give way to a natural brook, gurgling quietly in the night. Behind us looms the deceptively calm shadow of the palace, too far away for us to see the patterns of the guards, or for them to see us. This is unknown territory, far from the roads that Oscar and I traveled. Not even a path can be seen amongst the grass and trees. We must rely upon Caleb to be our guide. He motions us closer and speaks in a low tone. Keep an eye out for centipedes. The bite won't kill you, but your screams would draw notice. With no further explanation, he moves out, leaving us to follow. Neither Oscar nor I is an expert in woodcraft, but neither are we strangers to the outdoors. Oscar in particular always loved climbing trees or games of catch-catch in the forest. Thus, I know how to place my feet to avoid making too much noise, and which bits of brush are most likely to hide creatures who will retaliate for being disturbed. Daring robberies, ancient tunnels, and now sneaking away in the dark to save a lost princess. It's very close to being an entertaining adventure. Calum leads us along the water's edge in silence for some time, and eventually stops by a grassy bank. We'll set up camp here camp what about the rendezvous it's tomorrow we're spending the night out here was that not obvious if it had been obvious earlier we could have brought supplies blankets food from the kitchen dinner is over how many meals a day do they eat in osendaur in osendaur we eat a good breakfast before a hard day's work or a fight. It's all right. Once the sun's up, we can hunt for plants. And with the stream right here, we could even fish. With no hook, line, or net? Right. Well, we can still find food. It'll be fun. This is not fun. Then what is it? If you told us more about what you were planning, we'd be better able to help you. You know enough. You know, she promised not to ask questions, but I didn't. I am not interested in your nattering. All I want to do is help Cassidy. You understand that, don't you? I liked her, and I let her down. I couldn't protect her. I owe her the best that I can give, and to do my best, I need to know what you know. You don't need anything. Please. Not even Caleb can hold out against those eyes forever. I certainly couldn't. Fine, ask your questions, but I don't promise to answer. Do you know who it is that has Cassidy? No, but it doesn't matter. The political... This isn't politics. This is a crime about coin. How do you know that? 
You don't need to know. Sigh. What are you expecting to happen tomorrow? We find the location ahead of time, and the two of you put yourselves out of sight and stay there. They expect me alone. If we are betrayed, if Cass is in danger, you are my reserves. If everything goes by plan, then when Cass is safe, when they think they've won, you take them. So you are double-crossing them. You object? They are criminals. They don't deserve to get away with it. No, I agree, but there's only three of us. There's a limit to how much we can do. Plate pickers like these have no loyalty. I don't expect more than one or two at the most. If there's a full company, then don't waste your strength. If they are few, then show no mercy. Understood. Good. He rolls his head around his shoulders, stretching out the tension. You should get some sleep. We'll need to be up at dawn to find our position, especially if you expect to forage. Uh, I'd better find some leaves for a mattress. The two young men walk off in different directions, leaving me alone. So far, this doesn't seem to be turning out too badly. If Caleb's telling the truth, then tomorrow we should be able to save Cassidy and bring her safely home. The palace will be in a panic from the night searching, but with the prince and princess beside us, we'll be greeted as heroes. If. So now we have a choice. If this was our first time through, we wouldn't get a choice. So I'm going to go ahead and play it as though it were. If in your first time through, you go and talk to Oscar automatically. So let's go do that. I find Oscar a little ways along, seated by the stream. Despite what he said earlier, he doesn't seem to be assembling a bed, just staring into the rippling surface of the water. Hi. Hi. Mindful of the damp, I take my time choosing a seat beside him. You did well with Caleb. You put him at ease. You got him to open up to you, at least a little. Without your help, I wouldn't have any information at all. I do listen to you, you know, in all those lessons. Just because I don't want to spend my life manipulating people doesn't mean I can't do it. I never said you couldn't do it. No, but you were surprised, weren't you? You think I'm a child, and it's more fun sometimes acting like one. I don't think you're a child. No? Then what is it? His eyes fall upon the spot where the amber stone would have hung if I had chosen to wear it. Why do you always turn me away? You said we weren't going to do this. That was then. That was before I had to listen to someone trying to kill you while I was helpless. He... I know he wasn't. That doesn't change how it felt to me then. How it felt to watch him force you into his hands. To stay behind while he took you away. To see you draped over him. It was nothing. Shh! I'm telling you how I felt. I thought I could be a grown-up and let you go without a fight. But I was wrong. We need to talk. My heart is hammering in my chest. We can't do this. So... This is where I'm going to pick on Oscar just a little bit because in my first first playthrough before I pulled up a walkthrough I ended up getting a non-standard bad game over uh, really early on in the game actually because I was treating Oscar like I loved him but as a brother and so I, you know, I even said you're like a brother to me and so then later when he would come to your help if he was your love interest he does not come to your help as a brother and I was like dude <laughs> that made me kind of sad because I feel like you know he he. I, I understand from a gameplay perspective why that was a non-standard game over but from a characterization perspective it irked me so but we are not going after Oscar, and we don't have to worry about the non-standard game over because we have made the appropriate um, choices, arrangements with regard to Gaston. So we're going to say you're like a brother to me. If we were going after romancing Oscar, we would say what about Cassidy? 
But after everything, doesn't he deserve to know the truth? It will be hard, but at least it will be over. Oscar, it's not because you're younger than me. We're really not that far apart. I know that. You're closer to me than my own family. That's the problem. You are family to me. You're my best friend, but it can't be anything more than a friend to you. I just can't see you like that. Oh, I've been trying to discourage you because I didn't want to hurt your feelings. I want you to be happy. I want you to fall in love and marry someone who's a great match for you. And if I'm lucky, maybe I'll get to see your children someday and be Aunt Maddie to them. I don't want to lose you, but I can't be with you. Not that way. So, I guess that's that. I'm sorry. For what? For being yourself? For telling me the truth? For causing you pain? You can't stop me from ever being hurt. I can try. Isn't that my job? Maybe I don't need you in that job anymore. I... If that's what you want. So it's true. He does intend to marry Cassidy and leave me behind. I knew this was coming. I have to be strong. I stand up and brush myself off. Your idea about the leaves was a good one. I'd better find my own bed. Good night. Night. Well, it's done. He's free and I, I go on. So we're going to pause there. Let me save. Um, that was chapter two. And <laughs> so, so let me see what I'll have. That was kind of a shortish one compared to the prologue was long and, and chapter one was kind of long. Chapter two is short. Mm -hmm. um, we, we gave our oath under duress. I, I'm kind of different or weird because I don't really feel like oaths under duress actually count um, and I know that's like a really common trope in, in games and literature and, and, and we'll give you your oath and I'm like well if you had no choice then it's it's not really but okay we gave our oath to Calum to help him to 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 actually to serve him um, we burgled the royal treasury and um, we crept through a secret exit through some old catacombs slash sewer tunnels. Uh, now we're camping out at night, which, who? I hope it's warm because dying of exposure is a thing and it doesn't even have to get that cold. So that's your, um, <laughs> that's your friendly let's play uh, warning for the day that watch out for exposure while camping. Um, and then when faced with a choice with Oscar, we told them, told him that he was like a brother to us. And, and I'm not 100% thrilled with his response. I know that he's had a long day. He's, he's been assaulted twice and, and, and it's never, it's never fun hearing that someone that you love doesn't love you back. But he does have a great deal of power over her by virtue of being a prince, a someday king, and kind of her employer-ish. His, his, his parents are technically employing her, but, but he does have employer rights over her. I'm sure he could get her fired very easily if he wanted to. And to just be like, well, maybe I don't want you around anymore. After she said that he's her best friend and like a brother to her, that would hurt. That would hurt me. And, and I think it hurt Maddie too. So, um, you know, that was, that was a shame. 10, 10 points from Gryffindor there or whatever house. But uh, uh, I, I wasn't a big, big fan of Oscar's response there. So, um, but that's okay because this is a Gaston walkthrough. So we don't need Oscar to to be nice to us we're making other plans so thank you so much for watching for sticking with it um this is once again the royal trap by hanako games and my name is anna mardal and i will see you in the next let's play you guys have a great day bye bye <laughs>